joined us. And so uh, welcome, Haley. Um, okay, Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Overcoming Enemy Attacks. You know, when the Israelites went into the promised land there, there were great promises and, and much territory to be conquered, but yet there were all kinds of forces coming against them. And that's, we're in the promised land right now. We're, mm -hmm. we're in that place where God has, is pouring out his promises on all of us, and yet we're all subject to attacks by uh, enemy forces. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I want to say that uh, I don't believe anybody here is uh, possessed with devils mm. uh, or demons, but but we can be uh, attacked by them nonetheless. You know, the Bible talks easily talks and identifies about 20 different evil spirits that could come against us, and that's a spirit of infirmity, uh, uh, deaf and dumb spirit, mm. um, poverty spirit, a lying spirit, familiar spirit. So they're just all kinds of uh, uh, evil spirits that uh, are around us because we're in the promised land. We're in the land where God mm -hmm. is pouring out promises on us and, and the devil's not happy about it. He doesn't want us to walk in the blessings and promises of God. And so there, uh, there are different ways that uh, people open the door uh, to, to attacks and there are ways to get rid of the attacks. And that's what we're, we're going to lay some foundation tonight uh, and show you where the attacks come from and how to overcome them. So you are overcomers. And so we're talking, uh, why are you an overcomer? Well, you're an overcomer because you overcome some obstacle, some uh, difficulty, something coming against you. Mm -hmm. You overcome it. That's why you're an overcomer. If you never overcome anything, if you never, uh, never try to make yourself better and, and, and move on with the Lord, then you're not an overcomer. An overcomer is somebody that overcomes something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to talk about today, overcoming. Um, it, we, the promises of God are for the overcomers. You look in Revelation, mm -hmm. and he writes... Uh, Jesus writes letters to seven different churches and gives them all kinds of promises. But the pro only people who get the promises are the overcomers. Amen. And so we're going to talk. That's to, this group. <laughs> so we're going to talk about overcoming tonight. Amen. How to overcome uh, attacks, of the, attacks enemy. of the enemy. And, and it's real important. And we're all, uh, at some point in time, we're all under some kind of attack. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be an overcomer. And what I want us to think about today is how do we open the door uh, to have these attacks uh, come to us? Mm -hmm. But I'm especially interested in how do we close? Close the doors. Close the door and, and defeat the attacks of the enemy that come against us. And let's just start with this one. Because this is a very interesting one, and it's something that we could all uh, easily fall into, and that is unforgiveness. Now, if we have unforgiveness in our life, uh, what happens to us? We are, <laughs> we are turned over to the tormentors. Those are evil spirits. So if we have something like unforgiveness or bitterness in our life, we are subject to the tormentors. That's a uh, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 18, and lots of people have some area of unforgiveness or some area of bitterness in their life, and that opens a door. That opens a door mm -hmm. to the tormentors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an evil group yeah, of spirits, yeah. the tormentors. We, none of us want to be subject to the tormentors, and so we're going to find out how to cut things off like this off, how to overcome these things. And, and the first thing I want to look at are the ways that we open the doors to uh, demonic spirits. But before I do that, I, I want to look at Jesus and his ministry and, and just start with Mark uh, chapter one, verses 30. 
2 through 34. Mm -hmm. It's a real interesting little passage here. And, and in Mark 1, one of the first things that Jesus does, he goes into a synagogue. This is where pious people are. These are people that are trying to live right. And uh, when he goes in there, he encounters a person with an unclean spirit, and he casts it out. And then uh, at, in the evening, uh, they bring to, to Jesus many people that were sick and tormented by devils. Mm. And he healed the sick and cast out, out the, devils. the devils. The whole city came to the door of where he was. Because why? Because he's the first one who knows how to deal with demons, evil spirits. Amen, amen. And it wasn't like he had gone into uh, some bad neighborhood. I mean, he had gone up there to the synagogue where the most pious, the most uh, righteous people uh, doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing. And there he encountered uh, an evil spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, you really don't get any of the prophets dealing with evil spirits. And, and I believe part of the reason for that is God didn't want to expose people to evil spirits, to, to the, even the existence of it. I, I think he just let people blame him for good and bad things and uh, mm -hmm. in the Old Testament because they didn't know how to overcome evil spirits. But now in the New Testament, what we find is that God is good yes. and the devil is bad. Amen. And, and we have been given authority by Jesus Christ to overcome the bad and the evil. And how do we overcome evil? With, With good. good. Well, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy is to overcome <laughs> evil with good. And so we must be encountering evil. Mm. You can't go uh, through a day uh, in life without encountering some evil. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of evil coming from all different ways. Sufficient is the evil of this day. That's what it says. So there's the plenty day. of evil today. Don't worry. Don't worry about the evil of tomorrow. There's lots of it out there. Wherever you're going to go, there's going to be evil there. You need to know how to recognize it and how to overcome it. Jesus knew how to overcome it. Now, the thing about the people that were brought to him uh, it, it's very interesting in those three passages, it says the whole city came to his door. They were so excited that somebody Body could deal with, with evil spirits, spirits and overcome. So the whole city came to the door of the house where he was, and, and they laid down the sick people and the people uh, oppressed by the devil, and he healed all kinds of sicknesses and, and all kinds of diseases, and he cast out, out the devils. The devils. Okay, there are two terms in here I want to focus on uh, tonight, a and one of them is a word that in the New American Standard, it says they were devil-possessed, but if you really look at the Greek, uh, uh, perhaps a better way to uh, interpret that would be demonized rather than mm, mm, uh, mm. demon possessed is demonized. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, they were being attacked by demons. Mm -hmm. The other word that's really interesting to look at is uh, when it said he cast out devils. Uh, they use the word there that could also be translated as expel. Now, this mm. is really interesting. Oh, I like that word. Concept because in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is called the breath of God. And so evil spirits can also be thought of as breath, but it's not the breath of God. And so we can breathe in the evil spirits, but we can also breathe, breathe out, out the evil spirits, and that's called expel. Spell. Okay, so these people that came to him that night uh, were not what I call uh, demon-possessed like the man, the madman like of Gadara, who had a uh, a lot of evil spirits in him. These were just people. A lot of these people were simply under attack. And, and what do I mean by mm -hmm. under attack? Well, their body, they were sick. And where, mm -hmm. where does sickness come from? It comes from the devil. Because Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus. Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So all sickness 
comes from the devil. All healing comes from, from God. God. Amen. Jesus is the great physician. And so we just established in the New Testament, in the New Testament, God is good. The devil is bad. Mm -hmm. Anything bad, it's going to come from the devil. Anything good, it's going to come from, from God. From God. Every good and perfect gift, gift comes from down from heaven, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So God is good. We need to establish that. God is good. And, and, and in serving him, everything that comes from God is good. And the devil is bad. And everything that comes from him is bad. And he's trying to stir up a lot of evil. Amen. But we overcome. We're overcomers. We Hallelujah. Overcome You're an overcomer. Evil with good. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about five ways that people open the door to mm. attacks by the devil. And that doesn't mean that any of us are possessed with devils like the madman of Gadara, mm. but we could all benefit from knowing how to overcome demonic attacks against our lives. And so that's the reason I want to look at what doors open up to demonic attacks and how to close the doors and to expel, expel the evil spirit, just like breathing him out. And we're going to do that, give you an opportunity to just breathe out and expel mm -hmm. all demonic attacks against you tonight. Okay, so the five doors, five ways to open doors to demonic attacks. The first one is sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Romans 6.23 says that there are consequences of sin. When we sin, there are consequences. Some things happen, and they're not going to be good things. And you look at Adam and Eve in the garden. They mm -hmm. sinned, uh, and God said, when you sin, you will die. Uh, but the kind of death he was talking about was a separation from God. They were kicked out mm -hmm. of the garden. Mm -hmm. And so what it says in Romans 6, 23, is that the wages of sin is death, yeah. or the consequences of sin is death. It's a separation from God. But if we're separated from God, and this is a real important uh, concept, if we're separated from God, we're open to all kinds of demonic that's attacks. Right. That's so right. that's the first that's the first way to open the door to attacks from the enemy is our own personal sin. Uh, and I'm not going to go into that, but I do want to give some personal examples. Mm. And I want to talk about my brother-in-law um, and, and I just give you a little bit of story of him because this is going to be real relevant to these doors. And my brother-in-law uh, came back from the Korean War, and he was a, a veteran, a uh, military veteran, and he got a good job because he, he was very sharp and looked very sharp coming back from uh, the military, and but he didn't have a college degree, and so he got overlooked. He got overlooked uh, in his professional career, uh, but he was smart enough. They used him to train the new the new people, uh, but he couldn't get a higher job, and so he got frustrated, and, and that caused him to sin, and he committed adultery on my sister, and, and he became a hippie, and he went off with a young hippie girl, even though he was married <laughs> to my sister, and he had some children, okay, so that's the first consequence, and, and that uh, really caused some evil attacks against him and his family, and I'll, I'll go into more and elaborate on that just to show you. This is just a personal example. First door is if you commit a sin, there are going to be consequences. You're going to be separated from God and, and you're open to demonic attacks. Mm -hmm. The second one is somebody uh, can be a victim. This is number two, how uh, to open the door if you're a victim of some kind of sin or harm. Well, my sister was a victim uh, because her husband 
uh, turned into a hippie. He went off with a young hippie girl. Uh, and then after a couple of years, he, he wanted to come back home. So he came back home and uh, my brother-in-law and my sister lived, existed together, but they never, I don't think they ever loved again. A and uh, so my sister uh, was a victim then. So something traumatic happened in her life. It wasn't because of something she did, mm -hmm. but it was something that harmed that somebody else caused her to be harmed. And so the first way to open the doors if you commit a sin or secondly if somebody commits a sin against you or harms you or you have a traumatic experience or you're a victim of something that's number two and number three is that children in a house like that yes whether they are young children or whether they're still in the womb they can mm. be victims of the of the fighting that the mother and the father are doing. And that's exactly what happened with my sister and her husband. They were constantly fighting. They were, existed together, but they were not in love. A and so as a result of that, their children mm -hmm. and, their, and all of their ch grandchildren became addiction, addicted to drugs. either drugs or alcohol or something. Mm -hmm. And then as a result of that, my sister died uh, at an early age of uh, an addiction to cigarettes, and she had uh, lung cancer. So she died. One of my nephews died uh, with uh, addi from addiction and overdose of mm -hmm. drugs. And uh, one of my nieces uh, is about 40. In the last 20 years, she spent 15 years in prison. <laughs> uh addicted and she was addicted she was a thief a and so uh, i'm just showing you okay that from one sin that from the sin of the husband uh then he brought all of these consequences into the family uh, and were all of the children and he became an uh a, an alcoholic and his children became alcoholics and drug addicts and, and his wife was addicted to cigarettes and they started dying. Uh, so that's the consequence. You have those three. Mm -hmm. but, but what I want to see, I want to have Sherry read James 3.16. Is, is that it right there? James 3. Okay, we'll do th James 3.16. Okay. It says, and this is from the New uh, American Standard. Uh, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. So that's exactly what happened in my sister's family because her husband was self-centered. He went off and uh, committed adultery and then they came back and they fought and they didn't forgive each other and, and they fought. And then you had all evil came in, in that family and mm -hmm. killed, has already killed several of them and uh, sent uh, some to prison and they had all of that terrible things, horrific things. And you might say, well, my sister wasn't even responsible. Uh, she didn't cause all of that trouble. It came from one door being open. Mm -hmm. Then the next door was open to that, uh, the problems that she was having. And then thirdly, the children and the grandchildren were all subject because all evil was in that house, had all kinds of problems. So the first three doors or doing, uh, committing sin yourself, or uh, being a victim of sin and harm mm -hmm. and tra trauma. Uh, our third, being uh, in a, a family where there is uh, fussing and fighting and <coughs> turmoil, and whether it's a young child or even a, a, a baby in the womb of its mother, all of those can be effect affected because the devil is going to try to kill everybody yes he comes to steal steal mm -hmm. kill and destroy so the devil <laughs> is on the job uh, he's he's done that uh, uh, for years and years and he still has that same strategy to steal kill and destroy now those are the first three ways that doors can be opened <laughs> the, the fourth way is related to the occult. Now, mm -hmm. the occult is any people dealing with supernatural things and 
and uh, mystics and Witchcraft. magic, magic and uh, all of those kinds of things and casting spells and all of that. That's the occult. A and th this is the fourth way that uh, the door can be opened to attacks by the enemy. And that is by somebody of your relatives the third or fourth generation back. So mm -hmm. I'm talking about your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. Were any of those involved in any occult area, mm -hmm. such as such as uh, uh, operating and and following other false gods? Any religion uh, could be a false god, and that could be an occult. But a lot of other things, you know, magic and, and mystics and, and all of those kinds of things are the occult. And that, when people are doing that, their sins are visited on the third and fourth generation. Mm. And that causes a curse. And mm. so you may be under a curse uh, because of something your great-grandfather did or great-grandmother did. Uh, because they did uh, some evil, and and then you you are under a curse, and you're subject to a, an attack by the demon, uh, and we need to close that door today. We're going to close it yeah. before we're over or through here. So it's just the history of the occult that there's been somebody in your family, and my uh, there are, have been all kinds of curses in my family that I've had to deal with. Uh, it's just very common because we don't know what our great grandmother did. And we don't know what our great grand, because there's several of them out there and they did a lot of things. And I'll tell you about Sherry and I, for example, we both have some Native American blood in us and they they worship evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And so that created some curses on us, but but you could have grandfathers and grandmothers that uh, worshiped evil spirits, and, and that would open up a door for you to be attacked with a curse. Now, in modern medicine, when you go to the doctor, you're supposed to fill out uh, any kind of sicknesses and any kind of diseases that your grandparents had and your parents had. And what are that? That's really a curse, though. You know, if you if you get a disease like that, that is going from one generation to another generation, that's an example of a curse. Or, or it may be the alcoholism in in your family. It goes from one generation to the next generation. Those are curses. Those are curses. And it was opened up because one of your ancestors did something that was sin to God. And what I want you to think about here in the occult, it doesn't just have to be worshiping a false god. It, god calls a lot of things equivalent to the occult. And I want Sherry to read something out of Deuteronomy 18. Um, and I've got two different translations. Is that right or just have one? Just one. Okay, let's read this. Uh, New International uh, Version. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire. Uh, okay, so let's just start right here. I mean, this is worshiping a false god, and, and it's a terrible thing. We couldn't imagine uh, us doing anything like that or you doing anything. We couldn't imagine. But God then, in the rest of this verse, says that there are a lot of things just as bad, just as equivalent to worshiping false god. Now I'm going to ask Sherry to read that rest of the verse who practices a divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft. 11 are, are what's that, 11? Are that's cast spells. Uh, oh, that's verses, verse 11. Verses 10 11. Are cast spells, or who is a medium, or spiritualist, or who consults with the dead. So they're worshiping gods. Now, I mean, that may seem like a terrible thing, but God says, hey, there are a lot of things that yeah. are equivalent to worshiping false gods. A lot of things. And any of those things open the door to demonic attack. Okay, so I want to talk about next, how can we 
close the door. Oh, hallelujah. How, how can we expel <laughs> yes. these demons then and stop and overcome the demonic attacks against our life? It might be an attack against our family. It might be an attack against our children. It might be an attack against our relationship. It might be an attack uh, against oh, mentally. Our, our mind or, or our bodies. Uh, arthritis, and I know you're all too young for arthritis, mm. but arthritis is a demonic attack. Yeah. It's been open. The door's been open somewhere. So anything, if you go to talk to the doctor and tell him, well, my grandmother had this and my mother had this and I have this, uh, that is a curse. It just re keeps repeating generation after generation and, and well, the door was open. And so that's that's the first thing we have to I have to close that. Well, and, and then the fifth way to open the door is for you to be personally involved in the occult. And that's anything mystical or magical or, or uh, supernatural or spiritist, any of these kinds of things, yourself op operating in it. And that'll open the door to attacks by the enemy. But what I really want to talk about today is closing the doors and overcoming those things. So how do we overcome the enemy and stop the attacks of the enemy? The first thing is repentance. Yeah. Now, well, let's think about what repentance is. It's really changing your mind, changing your mind, renewing your mind to God and think about God as good and following and seeking him and, and renewing your mind to the word of God and when you begin to repent, it changes the way you were going. You were going away from God. You repent, you turn, and you come back close to God. Mm. Draw near to him. Uh, and and that's, that's real important about coming. But one of the things repentance does is it, it, you realize that you need to be sorrowful for the mistakes and the sin that you have done. And so that sorrow then. So you, so you just can't say, oh, well, that was nothing and I'm just going to change. I won't do that anymore. But true repentance is going to lead to sorrow over the sins that you have remorse. committed. Remorse. Remorse. And then the third thing about it is you confess your sins. So you repent, you begin to renew your mind. So you get knowledge about what was sin and, and what is serving God. And, and then you are remorseful over it, and then you confess your sins, that you have sinned. You, you acknowledge that you have sinned against God, and, and that's real important. And the third thing, see that I'm talking about five different ways that we need to live a, a lifestyle to overcome the demonic attacks. And so the third one is to confess our faith. Because mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. Amen. So Amen. if we're not confessing faith, then Jesus Christ's hands are mm -hmm. tied in your situation. So mm -hmm. you've got to be confessing your faith. This is what I'm believing. This is what I'm expecting. This is what I'm hoping for. You need to be confessing your faith and confessing the word of God. Because Jesus said we live by the word of God. We don't live by bread alone, but we live by the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so you, you need to be studying the word, hearing the word, letting the Father speak to you by his spirit. So your faith will arise and you confess. Uh, you confess. And then that, that is going to turn uh, and close the doors and let you overcome the enemy. Number four, this is a way to close the door against the enemy, overcome the enemy. Number four is to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. James chapter four, verse seven says that we are to submit ourselves to God. Now you have to humble yourself to submit yourself to God. Mm -hmm. And then you resist the devil. See, there's a lot of people out there trying to resist the devil. That's right. we're, we're talking about resisting the devil today. We're not wanting him to come into our lives and into our families and, and have free reign in our lives. We're talking about resisting him, but it doesn't start with resisting the devil. That's it right. starts, starts with right. humbling yourself and, and submitting, submitting to God. God. I mean, so that's number four. 
Number four on the ways to close the door uh, to the enemy and overcome him, and that is to humble yourself. Glory to God. And number five is forgiveness. And so you cannot carry unforgiveness and bitterness around. You have to forgive everybody. And you might want to say, well, I don't want to I don't want to forgive my mother-in-law or I don't want to forgive my father-in-law or I don't want to forgive this person or, mm -hmm. or that person. No, you, you cannot hold on to any unforgiveness because from Matthew 18, we find out that we're turned over to the tormentors. Oh, no. Our life is open to tormentors. Mm -hmm. So evil spirits can come into our life mm. if we have any unforgiveness in us mm. or if we have any bitterness in us. And, and so it's real important to get all of that out. You, you've got to clean it out. That's right. And, and see, the unforgiveness may not have been because of a sin that you did. You may have been the victim of somebody else committing a sin against you. And then you, you say, well, I I don't forgive them. They, they cause this harm. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to carry uh, some kind of unforgiveness or bitterness in you. All it's going to do is open you up to evil spirits who will come in and, and cause you problems. See, there are all kinds of unclean spirits. Yeah. Uh, spirit of bondage, a spirit of fear, a spirit mm -hmm. uh, a spirit. Un, of infirmity, deaf and dumb spirit, spitter, uh, spirit of heaviness. Oh, uh, hallelujah. You might say, well, I'm I'm oppressed or I'm depressed. You know where that comes from? Or it stressed comes, out. I, I, that comes from a spirit, an unclean spirit of heaviness. And how do we get rid of an unclean spirit of heaviness? Put on the, the garment, garment of praise. praise. Glory to God. You got to praise. When you're praising God, see, that spirit has to run away. He doesn't like noise. The devil doesn't like noise. <laughs> so you worship the Lord and, oh, yeah. and the devil will leave. Worship oh, yeah. the Lord and yeah. he will leave. I'm talking about how do we close the doors? Now, some people don't get their deliverance. They don't get freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and why is that? Well, there's some things that keep you back from getting your deliverance. And one way, one thing is not being baptized in water. Mm -hmm. I hope all of you mm -hmm. have been baptized in water. If you have not been, you need to be baptized in water because what is water? Because see, we are crucified with Christ. We're buried with him mm -hmm. in water baptism and we're raised again in resurrection with him to the new life. Yes. And see that, that water baptism uh, separates you from the sin, uh, from your past. It separates all that out. A lot of people are not water baptized. and They don't think it's important. But let me tell you, it is important. And you want to know why you're not uh, delivered from these demonic attacks? If you have not been baptized in water, you're not separated from the sins. And the sins open up the, the doors. doors to demonic attacks. So it's important. Now, here's another thing. Do you just sit in your uh, room all day and not fellowship, not, not call people, not talk to people, not visit people? Fellowship. See, First mm. John 1, uh, 9, I believe it is. We have fellowship, fellowship one, one with another. other. And the blood of Jesus, Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Oh, so what is going to activate the blood to cleanse us? See, to be clean uh, and to, to be uh, rid of the demonic attacks against your life, you have to have the blood of Jesus activated in your life. How is uh, How can we have the blood of Jesus activated in our life? It's by fellowshipping one with, with the other. One with the other. And so that's with godly people. And another way that, that you may not have gotten free uh, from demonic attacks is if you keep hanging around some of the old people. Mm. So where you have soulish relationships right. with ungodly people. You're still connected to them, 
and they're going to draw you back and, and keeps you from being free from demonic attacks. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. This Amen. is an important message for all of us. Mm -hmm. I, I believe we've all suffered attacks. It might be in our bodies from sickness or, or from disease or, or, or from uh, our relationships of uh, problems in our relationships or in our family or with our children. We need to close the door on the devil in, in our lives. And I'm not saying that you are possessed of a devil. Sherry and I, on this coming Saturday, there's a woman from Atlanta they're bringing over here because they say she's possessed with devils and they know we can cast out devils from people who are possessed with devils. So we'll do that on Saturday. We'll cast out the demons out of her. Uh, she has three of them. We'll cast them out on Saturday. That's a different scenario than you and me. You and I are just under attack uh, by the enemy because he comes to steal, kill, kill and, and destroy. destroy. He's constantly coming. That's what he does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we need to keep uh, defense against him. Amen. Keep our spirit strong. Yes. Uh, and and kick him out of our life and kick him out of anything in our life that he's involved with. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give all of you an opportunity mm -hmm. to kick the devil out of your life and out of your Amen. marriage and Amen. out of your relationship with your children and and, and to free them because there is a spirit of bondage uh, uh, on some people and there there is a spirit of fear and timidity mm -hmm. uh, but god has not given us a spirit of fear but of a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind so i'm going to turn it over to sherry because she has a part tonight there there is a uh, a prayer that um will help release uh any attack any any thing that the enemy has tried to do with our our bodies or our minds or our families our and our life and and so uh the the first part of this prayer is just acknowledging that jesus is lord in in our lives and and then the second part is is releasing any unforgiveness any bitterness any hatred and that's the the next part of the prayer i'm just giving you an overall so that when we start uh you i start asking you to repeat after me you know uh what is is going on and so that forgiveness releasing that forgiveness is so very important uh to guard our hearts because out of our hearts flow all the issues of life. And then the next part, we're going to uh, just renounce any anything that that we have done or any of our family members have have done uh, where um, the old cult is concerned. And so we're going to renounce all of that. Um, looking at horoscopes, uh, playing with the Ouija boards, um, going to uh, card readers, uh, any of that is, is just, it just uh, opens up, like Brother Fred said, it opens up the door for the enemy to come in and, and bring an attack. And so we're going to, to do that. And then we're going to uh, remind the Lord that, that we are redeemed from the curse of the law. And that's in Galatians 3.13. And so we'll we'll talk about that. We'll talk about um, bringing peace uh, into our beings, and uh, and then then I will um, do the last part of the prayer. And you don't have to repeat this if there's nothing going on with you. If there's uh, your your a okay and your family's a okay, uh, then you don't have to to do anything. We're not telling you that you have to do this. But I'm saying that this will bring a releasement to you. This will bring, this will expel the enemy uh, from you, from your family, from your children, from your workplace, 
uh, uh, whatever uh, attack has been going on. And, um, and, and, and an example of expel is just simply breathe uh, uh, deep breaths out, breathe out. Mm. Uh, and that's actually you doing something. See, we mm. could just uh, sit here and Sherry could just say, come out the, the, the evil spirit mm. and, and stop harassing. But uh, this is also you activating your faith. See, it's, this is about faith. And, and so what I want you to do in the first part of what Sherry is doing is just simply to repeat what she had is saying. And I will repeat it uh, after she says it. And, and I wish you would just have your microphone closed uh, uh, off. And, and then she will say the prayer and what she wants to us to repeat. Then I will repeat it. And you can say it at the same time I do. And then when she says amen, we all stop praying. That's the end of our prayer. But then Sherry's going to pray for us after that. So we have three parts here. First, we will uh, just repeat what she prays, and then we'll say amen, then we won't pray anymore, but we can uh, breathe out, have big breaths, and we'll release any evil spirits that have tried to attach themselves to us. And then she will give that final prayer. Okay, the first part, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you are the son of God. And the only way to God. And the only way to God. That you died for me on the cross. That you died for me on the cross. And rose again. And rose again. From the dead. From the dead. I come to you for mercy. I come to you for mercy. And for forgiveness. And for forgiveness. I believe that you have forgiven me. I believe that you have forgiven me. And that I am your child. And that I am your child. And I receive your forgiveness. And I receive your forgiveness. And I receive being one of your children. And I receive being one of your children. Now, Lord, you know. Now, Lord, you know. There are some special issues. There are some special issues. That I have been going through. That I have been going through. That I have been tormented by. That I have been tormented by. And I want deliverance. And I want deliverance. I want your freedom. I want your freedom. First of all. First of all. I forgive any person. I forgive any person who has wronged me or ha hurt me. Who has wronged me or hurt me. I forgive them now. I forgive them now. Now I want you just to pause for a moment and and just in your in your mind uh, or out loud if you want to just call out the names of those individuals that you are forgiving right now that god is 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 bringing forgiveness to those individuals now let's continue lord i have forgiven these people lord i have forgiven these people and i lay down all bitterness and i lay down all bitterness hatred hatred resentment resentment and rebellion and rebellion i believe i believe you have forgiven me you have forgiven me and i thank you for it and i thank you for it now lord any activity that i have had now any lord any activity that i have had with the occult with the occult with any secret agencies. With any secret agencies. Or anything that Satan has control over. That are anything that Satan has control over. I repent right now. I repent right now. I renounce his authority. I renounce his authority. In my life. In my life. And now we're getting to the last part. 
Lord, if there's any curse in my life, Lord, if there is any curse in my life, any generational curse, any generational curse, I thank you. I thank you that you have redeemed me, that you have redeemed me with your blood, with your blood. And right now, and right now, I receive your blessings. I receive your blessings and your favor and your favor upon my life, upon my life. And now, Lord, and now, Lord, I come against any evil spirit. I come against any evil spirit that has tried to come and attack me. That has tried to come and attack me. Any type of attack on my body. Any kind of attack on my body. Any attack on my soul. Any attack on my soul. My mind. My mind. My will. My will. My family. My family. My finances. My finances. I say that it is bound up right now. I say that it is bound up right now. And I loose your goodness. And I loose your goodness. And your peace. And your peace. To come upon me. To come upon me. I will not compromise. I will not compromise. I will stand my ground. I will stand my ground. Because you have given me freedom. Because you have given me freedom. I say there's no place for these attacks in my life. There, I say there are no place for these attacks in my life. That I have authority. That I have authority. Given to me by Jesus. Given to me by Jesus. To overcome. To overcome. Every attack. Every attack. Now I want you just to breathe out. What are you doing? You're expelling. You're expelling anything that the enemy has tried to do to you. Anything that he has tried to do. Now, Lord, as your servant, as your representative here today, under the authority of Jesus Christ, I take dominion in Jesus' name, over every evil spirit and command those spirits to leave in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I release every one of you to go in the mighty name of Jesus and to give glory to the Lord for everything that he has done for you. Lord, I say that you are Lord over this meeting tonight. That you have defeated Satan on the cross and that your blood covers us this night in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing. Just say with me, I repeat with me, I have full deliverance. I have full deliverance. I have received full deliverance tonight. I have received full deliverance tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, you are overcomers. And I believe that what has been taught tonight is something that we all need to know and knowledge is important you know i was just reading in hosea today that my people the the word of god says my people perish for lack of knowledge and now you have weapons that you know what the doors are that open up to the enemy and you also know how to shut those doors. 